So if you notice, my backgrounds are constantly changing. Uh, my wife and I are doing a lot of uh, renovations in the house. She came up with the idea of having me move my desk to the other side of the room where I can have the wall as a backdrop. So in my last video, it was white. We painted it, now it's blue. I'm gonna be putting some pictures and artwork up later on. So this is kind of like a work in process. So let me get into it. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. This is JC Rocket Metal Reviews. My name is John, and today I'm going to be ranking the hair metal band Cinderella. They only released four albums, so it shouldn't take too long. But what's good about that is I can spend a little more time on each album. So back in the late 80s, I was a teenager first getting into metal. Hair metal was really big. I think like Guns N' Roses was like my gateway to heavy metal during that time. But back then I listened to bands like Def Leppard, Bon Jovi, Poison, Slaughter, and others. Now I don't listen to those bands anymore, or I rarely do. So like I said, they have four albums. The first one is a straightforward hard rock, and the others went into more like a bluesy direction. So with that being said, let me get into the ranking. At number four, I have Still Climbing. This one came out in 1994. This is their fourth and final studio album. It follows the same style as the two previous albums with a blues rock sound. This one did not chart as well as it was released at the height of the alternative and grunge years. It had a few singles, but none of them were very successful. A few notable songs were Bad Attitude Shuffle, Hard to Find the Words, and Hot and Bothered. So the latter was featured in the Wayne's World movie, if you remember that. The album includes a few songs they played live in the early days. Talk is Cheap, that one they played live back in 1987. Free it's a song they recorded as a demo back in 1985, but that never made it on the album until now. Now, in my personal opinion, I don't think it's a bad album. It's just not as memorable as the other albums. I bought all of these albums back when they came out, but this album didn't really stay with me. So for this reason, I ranked it last, but it's not a bad album. At number three, I have Heartbreak Station. This one came out in 1990. This is their third album, it was, and it was the follow-up to Long Cold Winter. On this album, they took like the blues rock direction, they took it even further. It was... Um, Rather successful, it hit number 19 on the U.S. charts. It's a good album. It has the song Shelter Me. That was a big hit. Now that song is very bluesy, has like backing vocals and slide guitar. And you hear a lot of like different instruments on this album. Tom Kiefer plays the mandolin, piano, lap steel guitar, mando cello, dobro, and acoustic and electric guitars. This is not a metal album, it's a straightforward blues album, and I have it at number three. Coming in at number two is Night Songs. This one is from 1986 and their debut album. Now, as you can see from the album cover, they really went overboard with like the Aquanet hairspray, and they dressed in spandex and the leather. But don't let that cringy 80s style cover fool you. The songs are really good, it's hard rock almost like ACDC. The most popular song from the album is Nobody's Fool. It's a power ballad. It received a lot of airplay and MTV. They had music videos for a couple of the songs, most notably Shake Me and Somebody Save Me. Many rock critics consider this to be a heavy metal album, and it definitely stands out amongst the other many hair metal albums released during that time. And coming in at number one, I have Long Cold Winter. This one came out in 1988. It's the perfect blend of hard rock, metal, and blues rock. You hear a big influence of like the Rolling Stones and Aerosmith. I mean, this is a 10 out of 10 album. The intro track, Bad Seamstress Blues, Fall Apart the Seams, opens with a guitar riff. Sounds like it belongs right off of Led Zeppelin III. 
Gypsy Road was a big hit on MTV. The ballad, Don't Know What You Got Till It's Gone. That was the highest charting single. It peaked at number 12. Other singles that charted were The Last Mile and Coming Home. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'm not the biggest fan of blues rock, but if an album is good, I mean, it's really good. It's probably one of their best albums of the 80s hair metal scene. And dare I say it, I think it's even on par with Appetite for Destruction. So, that's all I have for this video. I guess it was fairly short for a ranking video, but I thought this band deserves some attention. Not many people are talking about it. If you're a fan of the band, I recommend that you revisit these uh, four albums, specifically the first two releases. I think they stand out amongst the many bands that came out during those late 80s, your hair metal days. If you're a fan of blues rock, check out their last three albums. You hear a lot of Led Zeppelin and Aerosmith influence on those. And let me kind of close out this video. So comment below. Let me know what do you think of the band. Give me your ranking in the comments. Next, I'll have my Alice in Chains trackless ranking of the album Dirt. That's coming next. You can find me on Facebook at JC Rockamento Reviews. Like, comment, subscribe. Check out the other videos that are right over there on the screen and keep on rocking.